kicked out those demons in there. Bloody hell. Ooh, it's almost time. It's time for another one. Hello? Tristan. It's time. Remember about this. Specify what it's time for. Oh, right. Sorry. Some people don't think that the Bond Beyond Time review is canon anymore. How does that even work? I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't get it either. Anyway, it's time for another Power Ranger Top 10. Okay, cool. Now teleport to my command center. Immediately. Okay. Ready for another top 10 Power Ranger list? I'll see why not. Alright, so. Oh, yeah, I left my watch somewhere else. Do you know what time it is? I do if I know. I do. do. Alright, what time is it? It's morphing time! Power Professor! Go, go, Guardian! Ladies, gentlemen, and others, I am the Guardian. And I'm the Professor. And this is yet another Power Ranger Top Ten list. Told you we'd be back with more. That's for sure. And this time, we are looking at the best of our scarlet-colored heroes. The Top Ten Best Red Rangers. This is mostly going to be concerned with uh, the original Mighty Morphin to Dino Charge. And Dino Supercharge respectively. So, with that said, let's get started with number 10. Nick from Mystic Force. Why Nick? Well, let's see. Out of all the ones that we have, Nick is the one that actually has some development because do you want to add Max to this list? Not really, but then again, he's not exactly the worst Red Ranger either. Yeah, but compared to Nick, there's a lot to be desired. Do tell. Well, let's see. Out of all the Rangers, Nick is a is, um, if you're most familiar with the story of Megaforce, like, Troy, he is the new kid in town, the one that just blew in, uh, visiting, and this is where he starts start discovering his roots in Briarwood. He meets up with his friends, Vita, Madison, Chip, and Xander, as well as meeting with Donna, Claire, L uh, Lambo, eventually Daggeron, and Daggeron, eventually, and he starts discovering his roots and heritage. He starts believing in magic because once you first see him, he's kind of a bit of a cold guy. He's a bit of a guy that's cold, loners, keeps to himself. He's a bit of a dick. To an extent, yeah. Mostly spe spending most of the time just working on his bike. Yep. Yeah. Especially that one episode where he taught Daggeron how to ride a bike and Daggeron taught him how to ride a flying carpet. That was just weird. Yeah. What do you expect when a snow prince stepped in? Ah, uh, fair point. But I do understand what you mean. His de his development ranges through his learning to believe in magic through his roots. Uh, spoilers, we pretty much made that obvious. With being related to Udana, the white mystic ranger, and Liambo, the red fire wolf who was corrupted by darkness. And I mentioned Cla um, the fact that Claire herself, the gatekeeper, is his cousin. Hmm, that is true too. So he met all his living, natural-born family while still trying to keep his adopted family in his life. As he as at the end of Mystic Force, where Udana, Limbo, and Nick, aka Bowen, all ride together um, out of Briarwood. Add that with his uh, spectacular ability to harness the power of the Phoenix, and we have a pretty cool Red Ranger to start things off. Eh, that Mystic Fire... Magic powers of his mother and his and the fighting powers of his father. Mm. Well, I can understand why why he's at the bottom of the list, but even though Nick wasn't exactly my favorite character, there's no place to go but up. That's Spe for sure. Speaking of which, number nine, nine, Tyler from Power Rangers Dino Charge and Dino Supercharge. Tyler Na uh, Navarro. Mm-hmm. 
Bavaro, that's it. Yeah. Tyler, right off the bat when I saw him in Dino Charge, he hooked me immediately with his upbeat personality and his attitude to live every day like it's your last, or at least try to get some adventure out of your day. That's for sure, especially compared to um, his friends. And compared <clears throat> to the previous two Red Rangers, which were serious and bland. Mean Jaden and Troy? Yes. Ugh. So after those two, and no offense to their actors, it's completely the fault of the people who were, were doing the writing and the directing, but whoever stepped up to do Dino Charge actually gave personality to these characters. Tyler, as a leader, doesn't exactly get too much development, but his relationship with his father, who had gone missing at the time, and eventually came back as the Aqua and the Aqua Dino Charge Ranger, it's a bit of a tongue twister, and, Dino Charge Ranger. and his eventual relationships between all of his friends and his romantic relationship with Shelby. Oh, uh, yeah. That will, that won't, they kind of deal. No, they did. We never saw them kiss or anything, but we like to think they got together. Eh, they probably did. Not to mention um, him pretty much being the guinea pig for most of the uh, new Dino Charge weapons. Like that instance where he got turned into a freaking T-Rex. Well, he didn't get turned into a T-Rex, but he thought he was a T-Rex until his father snapped him out. But... Yeah, and the whole Battleizer mold is still fantastic as well. That was actually pretty sweet, how he actually able to actually use the actual dinosaurs for his actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. But that's for another list. Either way, Tyler's upbeat personality and just charisma is what drove him higher higher than Nick for me, personally. I think another reason why he was actually so upbeat and everything is because his actor, along with the actors for Black and Blue, mm -hmm. are also Sentai fans. They actually watched, um, they actually watched Kyo Rujo before actually getting more into Dino Charge themselves. Lovely. Nice to know that most of you guys out there who are playing our favorite spandex, multicolored spandex heroes, I can't think today, also enjoy the original source material. Or as Arthur K said, it's not spandex. And true, but later on with that. For now, we're heading off to number eight, Jason Lee Scott from My Morphin Power Rangers, season one and part of season two. Yeah, about halfway. Then he came back to be the Gold Ranger, but that's for another list. And then he came back again in Forever Red. Mm-hmm. Although kind of like the thing that he came back for, also for that legendary battlecraft with Super Mega Force. That's a start. That's another video entirely. But Jason's Jason is He's cool. He's cool. But he easily got overshadowed by Tommy once he entered once he actually entered the show and became the the de facto leader above Jason. Yeah. Jason was actually a pretty good leader right from the start with his optimism and kind of excitement about being someone who could help save the world. I mention the fact that out of all of them, he seemed like to be the most well-balanced. That is true. And he had a few uh, separate episodes dedicated to that. Like when, uh, I think it was Zed at the time, who kidnapped the other rangers and used similar candles used for the green candle to try to suck out their powers. Huh. You know, that planet actually worked to begin with. Rhea's and Zed's show have been, like, nothing whatsoever. Yeah, but unfortunately, Zed didn't make a strong enough monster. <sighs> and as a result, we got some really good depth with Jason. And as well, even before that, there were a couple episodes dedicated to his grief and regret for not getting to the Green Candle in time. And... We don't really see too much grief in Power Rangers, not not to my knowledge at the time. But still, that is a very good bit of development for anyone to have. Matter of fact, he gets a bit more development in new Boom Comics um, of My More Power Rangers and Gogo Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, the more recent one of the more recent issues. I think it was number eight or seven, where it turns out that Trini actually had a thing for Jason. Really? Yeah. Hmm. But and, she ended up with Zach. And Power Ranger Pink, good story. Great story. But, yeah. I'm telling you guys now, those comics are way darker than what we're originally used to you know, from the campy TV show. Yeah. Because in, yeah, it's the most recent issue, 
Jason learned that his dad is actually dying from a terminal illness. My God. Yeah, that's new in the comics and it's canon. Oy vey. But back to the campy show. Jason was a pretty cool Red Ranger right from the start, and he was a role model for several people. That's for sure. I mean, when you say when you say Red Ranger, who always comes to mind first? Jason. Precisely. In fact, to quote him in Forever Red, you didn't think you were going to do this without the original Red Ranger, did you? Number seven. Shane from Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Ah, finally a good red ninja. Was that a shot at, uh, er Alien Rangers? Yeah, I was trying to remember the dude's name. Orico. Orico. Yeah, honestly, I didn't want to take a pot shot like that, but, you know, they never got any kind of development, and the whole thing was just cringy as hell with the Rangers. Yeah, but back to the idea of, of Shane. I almost said Zane. That's a different ranger entirely. Different, different series, different era, different color. Mm -hmm. Shane was a bit of a loner at the start. He felt that he could do things on his own. And his development, much like some of the other characters later down the line in this list and future lists, he learned to adapt and learn with teamwork. And he even had his own unique arc to get his battleizer where apparently something from his past came back because he helped that thing in the past, and now they're returning the favor before they eventually die. Really? Yeah. Huh. Because, um... Skyla, I think her name is Skyla. Yeah. Um, her species is unique because when they die, they pass their life force off to another being. Weird. And so at the time, the uh, bounty hunter Vexicus, he wanted to get the Carmarian, I think her, that's where her species is, Carmarian, the Carmarian power for himself, but Skyla managed to give it to Shane first, and in the form of his really cool and sleek looking battleizer. It definitely really brings out the, how do you say, the element of air for him for that. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, um, I know... We're kind of dipping out of Ninja Storm and into Dino Thunder a bit. But we do see him developed as a ninja master in the Thunderstorm two-parter. Where, yeah. where the, um, before they get bra the Rangers get brainwashed by Lothor again, uh, he actually took pages out of Sensei's book talking to his students. So you see and know that they develop. I'm not saying a lot for as well for Dustin and Tori. Yeah, and, um, oh yeah, there was another great episode where we found out that Shane had a brother. Did we? Yeah. Uh, Shane had a brother who felt like he wasn't doing much with his life because all he wanted to do was skateboard. And, he, of course, his brother eventually found out he was a Power Ranger and ended up being uh, super yeah, yeah, proud yeah. of him. But the Monster of the Week uh, used fear as a tactic, and his one fear was his brother berating him about wasting his life. And so he learned to overcome that and become a lot closer to his brother, too. Neat. I gotta rewatch Ninja Storm again. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's de it's a lot better than uh, post-Dino Thunder with the Cal Explosions, too. Eh, we can say a lot about the Cal Explosions, but honestly, sometimes they actually are pretty damn cool. And sometimes they're irritating. But speaking of which, on to the next number. Number six. Casey from Power Rangers Jungle Fury. I love Casey. In fact, Jason Smith, uh, his actor, was the only other person to return for the Megaforce. That's right. Didn't we um, learn that he was actually part of the writing staff for that episode, which is why that episode was relatively decent compared to the rest of the crap in Super Megaforce? We actually got an actual Jungle Fury tribute. Yep. I know we could get on much of the Jungle Fury, but I heard it was supposed to be a really good season. It is really good. And now allow me to tell you why. First and foremost, it has the longest running three ranger team for about at least ten episodes, as opposed to Ninja Storm and Dino Thunder, where they get their new the new other rangers are introduced by the fourth. Hmm. And um with Casey especially 
he was not the, the original choice to be a Power Ranger. He was actually a cub at the time in the Paishwar Master um, School for Gifted Youngsters, and he had a very unique sort of tiger spirit. Uh, he was a cub, but because uh, Jared, uh, who turned out to be Daishi later, was such a dick, Master Mao banished him and uh, chose Casey because he saw potential in him. And, uh, continuing down the line, he still does struggle to catch up with the other rangers. There are several episodes where he requires extra training from RJ, or even Theo, which he helps him master his nunchuku. I remember actually seeing part of that one. Also, uh, do we know anything about uh, Casey's origin, like, background or anything? Um, sadly we don't. Um, in fact, not many. We don't know much about the Rangers in that series because, for as long as, for as much as we know, they were living at the at the Pai Shuar, uh Academy for most of their lives. Really? Because, huh? That's a little disappointing. Because this is going by Sentai right here, right now. But uh, Geki Red, I can't remember his name for the life of me right now. He was actually raised by tigers. Um, growing up. I remember that Go Kaiger episode, and that was a really good one too. It really was, especially when uh, when Doc and uh, he was getting that extra training. For yeah, him. that was a good tribute episode. Yeah, but uh, back to Casey. Yeah, and this is a really cool thing that made me appreciate him as a Red Ranger, uh, because everyone because of after everything that Daishi did in Jared's body and the belief that Jared was no longer. Uh, there, since Daishi had completely taken over, Casey was the only person to still believe that Jared was still alive in Daishi. And that completely overtaken by the possession. Yeah. And he went straight to Daishi's fortress, fighting all sort, fighting through an army of Rinsen, um, hopping warriors, which resemble Chinese vampires, and he fought and wrecked Daishi's palace, and he was able to successfully free Jared from Daishi. Okay, I gotta give Casey Prosh for that one. He was a clear badass in that moment, and I completely respect him for it. And it's nice to know that after he uh, gained his master's stripes and still helped out around the Paishwar Academy, he's still teaching kids on the side, too. Not just in the academy, but like random kids on in like uh, kung fu classes. Nicely done. Was he also working at a zoo at the time? Uh, yeah, I don't know what the deal with that was. Eh, get closer to the tigers, I guess, you know, for that whole symbolism. Probably. But that was Casey, and now we're on to... Number, number five. five! Andros, from Power Rangers, in space! <laughs> what? You just had to do it, didn't you? Really? If I wasn't going to, would you have done it? No. Well, you're just missing out on a great opportunity for a Muppets reference, man. Whatever. Andros is a cool character. He kind of is. And back with, I think, what I was saying regarding... Uh, who was it that I was talking about? Uh, Are you talking about Shane? We almost missed the yep. with Zane. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, back when I was talking about Shane, Andros was one of the first examples of a ranger leader learning to deal with teamwork. Because before anything else, he was looking for Zordon and dealing with shit on his own. Yep. And that was the fact he tried to kick off the, um, the rest of the crew, like, numerous times in the first episode. Yeah. And he eventually did learn to respect and even admire some of them as his friends, and get into a pretty cool relationship with Ashley. I need to rewatch that part again. Mm-hmm. But uh, Andros being the mentor figure as well, that was pretty interesting because at the time we had never seen one of those. It was always just some be ethereal being floating in a tube. Yeah, that's true. But technically, you can't really count Andros truly as a mentor because he was also being mentored himself by his other, by his friends as well. So the thing was mentalist and just them just learning from each other for this one. True, but I say mentor mostly due to uh, him teaching them how to deal with space travel. 
Yeah, you think that would be something they will learn from the past Rangers from there since they actually did their own share of space teleportation. You think so? And when he eventually came back in not only Forever Red, but the uh, to the 10th Power team up with Lost Galaxy, he had developed even more as um, someone to admire because Leo, uh, Lost Galaxy Red, what was really at really admired him uh, when he saved his life from Psycho Red because he was there when the Power Rangers saved the Earth. I remember that one now. Mm hmm And of course, um, he's also very technical. He did most of the talking relating to um, uh, where they were finding Serpentera on the moon in Forever Red. Yeah, Forever Red was a pretty good story, but there was just some discrepancies about, um, that I just wanted to nitpick at, but that's something for another time. But it was cool seeing all those reds in, one, in just one spot. And we haven't exactly talked about this with any of the other characters either, but I really like his suit. Yeah. The the, the helmet especially, because it looks really alien-esque. To an extent, yeah, but in Mega Ranger, not only were they also able to travel through space for, um, to, um, to a certain degree, but their powers were based on gaming and the internet. Yeah, that's still funny. So, I think we've made our case about Andros. And a little fun fact... His actor actually had to um, actually had to um, dye and bleach his hair in order to um, in order to be that color, and when Forever Red he um, he wore a wig because he just hated doing the whole process. I can believe it. It's damn sure too. Number th number four. Number four. Cole from Power Rangers Wild Force. Didn't he become Decker too? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. In Samurai. Mm hmm That was like a complete one eighty from. What he originally was. Yeah. Although it was also something of a bad mirror reference to what recently happened with him. Yeah. Not canon. Yeah. Anyway, Cole from Wild Force. He was a really interesting Red Ranger, especially with his connection to nature and animals, how he can actually understand what they're saying. When we first find him, he was in some kind of special tribe of people who lived in a jungle. Led by James Earl Jones. That would have been interesting. Mm -hmm. But either way, he was the, he was a, a legit Tarzan. I guess you could call him a Tarzan. Yeah, that was a good tar. He, yeah, he was talking to monkeys, eating bananas. He kind of was Tarzan. Yeah, at least it wasn't George in the Jungle. Oh, hey, 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 Cole, 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 the jungle, strong as he can be. No, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, back on point. Mm-hmm. He was the last of the Wild Force Rangers to actually be recruited by Princess Shayla and the rest of the team, with Taylor punching him swiftly in the stone or knock him out and bring him to the Animarium. Yeah, Punch Rock Fist just blasted him in the in the gut and says, "You've just been drafted." Yeah. Not gonna lie, that was funny. It was a bit of a bitchy move, but it was funny though. Yep. But. We all learned from his past that he was actually taken in by that tribe because his parents were actually killed on their expedition in order to try to find the Animarium. Mm hmm By, what was his name again? Victor Algo? Mm, Master Org. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's technically, he was killed by Master Org. Mm hmm But either way, during that fight when he and Master Org came face to face, Cole actually became, actually was a bigger man and actually forgave him for killing his parents and getting closure, not only with um, about the death of his parents, but with Master Org himself. Which then led to Master Org trying to kill them again in a giant monster form. Yep. And he just flat out flattened every single Wildzord and brought the Animarium down. Mm-hmm. That was a dark end. Yeah, that's why we're going to do another list relating to villains. But Cole was still a great character in his learning to deal with... I guess it's a fish out of water story with him learning about technology too. It is literally tar a Tarzan story of him trying to adapt to the modern world. Yeah, and that was uh, it was it was funny at times, but his kind heartedness is what really uh, brings him up higher on this list as a Red Ranger. Especially in the second episode where he's actually trying like you know listen to the heartbeat of an org and try to say if um, there's any way to actually like, try to like save him or redeem him. Or just has some, some kind of connection or understanding. Until he realized that they have no hearts and there is no saving them. Uh, editor, by chance, could you uh, roll that clip?
Thank you. Or not, depending on if you played it or not. But with that, Cole really grew as a character. And especially learning that sometimes you can't always find the peaceful route. And I'm just going to say this, he also had one of the better lion looking outfits. Yeah, I definitely do like that uh, suit of his. And Red Lion looks amazing. Definitely better than he looked in Super Mega. Ugh, let's not bring that one up. Instead, let's move on to... Number three! Wesley Collins from Power Rangers Time Force. Ah, uh, Time Force. I was wondering when he was going to make this list. Yeah, um, it's, our, it's less of a fish out of water story and someone else bringing a school of fish into a different pond. Because... He was the bridge for the other Time Force Rangers to get used to this new time. That I mentioned the fact that he grew up as a character because for a while he just seemed like a spoiled rich boy. He was a spoiled rich kid until he eventually learned that he, that in addition to his father being a complete and utter ass, Ugh. he eventually decided to take control of his own life and choose his own destiny, tearing himself away from his father and going to live with the other Rangers and help them bring down Rancic. And he even... Uh, learned about Rancic, even though he thought by, for a moment that things could have a peaceful root. And then that was immediately thrown out in the next episode. Oh, that's an interesting development right there. Yeah, but the rest of it is still pretty good, especially his development and with his relationship between him and Jen, as well as his relationship between Eric, and how, despite how much of a dick Eric acts... Wes still refuses to accept anything that he says and continues wanting to be friends with him. And so far as that, he managed to actually accomplish his goal by the time Wild Force came out, and they both became leader what? The, the, so, the, Silver Guardians. Yeah, Silver Guardians. And that was great. Definitely a well-done arc between him and Eric, and his relationship with Jen, Jen is just so adorable. Yeah, because didn't Jen start falling more in love with Wes than, than she did with Alex? Yes. Ugh, remember Alex? Yes. He's not on this list. Hmm. Well, whatever that was, Wes, love you, and I loved your season two. You had some great development and great relationships between all of your friends. As for his actor, I look forward to seeing him in The Order, whenever that's coming out. Please let it come out soon. And speaking of Order... Here's our next list, um, pick on the order, for our order. Number two! Carter fucking Grayson from Lightspeed fucking Rescue! You sound excited. Of course I'm fucking excited! Carter Grayson is a complete badass! You know how, uh, Jason David Frank is a badass in real life due to the fact that not only was he the Green Ranger, but also the White Ranger, two Red Rangers, and a Black Ranger? And I mentioned that um, for his undefeated skills in MMA and all the other awesome stuff he does. Yes. Carter Grayson is that in the series. He is a fireman who eventually learns more mili militia skills, and he is just brave. Fucking brave. Keep going. Well, uh, allow me to do a, an example of this. Sometime after the Titanium Ranger was joined the team, and after the whole thing with the Snake Cobra, Diabolica was brought back under sort of mind control from Queen Banshira or Prince Olympias, and I hate Prince Olympias. And their Zords are currently out of commission because they're being overrun by Batlings, or they're just jammed and they can't come out and form the Megazord. So Carter Grayson buys the team time to get the Megazord formed, runs out right in front of the giant evil Diabolico and takes out his pistols and just starts shooting at him. Okay, that's a rubber Bruce Willis moment. It is! And it just shows how much braver he has gotten because you have to be brave to be a fireman, period. And eventually learning that the person who uh, motivated him to become a fireman was his later boss. Captain Mitchell was the one who saved him when he was a kid in a fire in his own home. And that's what motivated him to become a fireman and eventually a Power Ranger. Okay, that's some great bridging right there. 
Definitely for sure. And the and I know this is barely touched upon, but the idea that he was the first test subject to try to use the titanium ranger powers shows even more how much of a badass he is, especially since that apparently really damages someone if it's not done right. I do remember reading about that somewhere. So, and all, all, would you say that Lightspeed like Rescue was an underrated season, for the most part? It is definitely an underrated season. Sure, the villains aren't anything special apart from Diabolico, but we had an original Power Ranger thrown in here. And, uh, f of course, a few, not that much development for some of the other Rangers. But still, we had a great Red Ranger, an interesting Green Ranger, before Bridge came along. And the idea... The first idea of the Power Rangers being part of uh, of a corporation, uh, Lightspeed Rescue. Again, that is true. Again, before SPD. That is actually true. Yeah, and and before um, that, and before Time Force's Biolab as well, because there are theories that the technology with Lightspeed Rescue and what they eventually learned from the Quantum Warfare and Biolab... Eventually evolved into the powers for Time Force? No, eventually evolved into the powers for SPD. Oh. So That's if you right, look, they did come first. Yeah, so if you look at it from a theoretical standpoint, SPD might not exist without Lightspeed Rescue. I mentioned the fact there was... The, um, SPD was also the first ones to actually be able to, like, you know... Try to do something with some kind of time travel and bring a dino on the Dino Thunder Rangers into their into their present. Exactly. So from there, they could have most likely evolve um, evolve the technology in order to become Time Force. Yeah. So Lightspeed Rescue, from a theoretical standpoint, is the main catalyst for SPD and then eventually Time Force. And that's just hi all hi uh, hy um, hypothetical. Yeah. And that all helped because of Carter Grayson. Because Diabolica, being shooting at the giant Diabolico is just one example. Um, I know I'm ranting a bit, but I just really like Carter Grayson as a character. Uh, the team episode with Lost Galaxy wasn't that great, but he showed that he had a kind heart when he was helping a little girl when uh, Drakina kidnapped her parents to absorb their life energy to allow her to mutate again. Jeez. So he, kept, he managed to... Uh, protect her while they were still trying to get her parents back. And um, there was an instance where three uh, ultra-powerful uh, demons were summoned, and they they had the rangers on the ropes, and Carter was nowhere to be seen at the time because he was knocked into a few boxes. And then uh, Carter just comes out with the combined weapons into the bazooka and just has it at point-blank range. Holy crap, Carter. And do you know what he does? He pulls the trigger. Naturally. And he survives. And I mentioned the fact that he was one of the few to actually come back for the Legendary War in a Super Mega Force. Yes. And he is still a fireman in that. And I greatly appreciate the duty that he's done for us. <sighs> so, how can we even hope to talk to Carter Grayson now, then. Well, we need someone who uh, does learn their lesson, uh, shows that he has a kind heart while learning his lesson. Uh, someone who is naturally uh, athletic beforehand, before becoming a ranger as well, like Carter, and eventually uh, finds a way to overcome his own flaws. And in the end, choose what's right for what he wants to do to help the world. Not what the world wants him to do. Well, combined with that and what we were just talking about then with other organizations, that just leads us straight to our number one pick. So... Number one! Jack Landers of Power Rangers SPD. Not even the first choice to be Red Ranger. Seriously, are there, are there only five color options? Uh, five... Basic color options in that time period, apparently. Yeah, because Sky originally wanted to be the Red Ranger, but he needed to learn a lesson. So Kruger of humility. Of humility. So Kruger geniusly made one of the most, one of the smartest dumb decisions ever in making Jack a Red Ranger. 
It's like one of the biggest middle fingers that helped teach you a lesson that paid off so well in the end. It did. Now, let us explain why. Uh, point number one, he's a street rat. Him and Z were both street rats with powers uh, before they came across SPD. While Z could make clones for herself, Jack could face with solid objects for complete intangibility. Yeah, and um, most people, um, well, at least in the SPD, uh, consider them criminals, but what they were stealing, they were giving out to the poor and the hungry. So they were good Samaritans in a bad way. Almost like Aladdin with a purpose. Yeah. And eventually... Robin Hood. Robin Hood. That's, that's the analogy we needed. And he eventually did become a Red Ranger, but only when he realized that his friend was in trouble. Because he'll practically do anything for Z. Yeah. They're like... They're really tight. Not in that way. Family way. Like, brother sister at this point. Mm-hmm. Because Jack finds his own little crush by the end of the series. That's right. And, um, let's see. Uh, I think it was episode three or five where he takes advantage of his position as leader. And then he eventually does learn from his mistake there and grows to be a better leader. And in several instances, he makes decisions that piss off other people, including his fellow rangers. Naturally. But they're the most strategic ways. Like, in uh, Sid's birthday episode, uh, she had the most surveillance experience while they were trying to find uh, a scientist who was being uh, hunted by, a, by an alien. And Sid got so mad at him because it was her birthday and he basically interrupted that to get a job done. Get the job done first. And then there's time for leisure afterwards. Yeah. You know, also, another good episode that I really like Jack in. Uh-huh. That one where to go to um, what seems like uh, modern day field Japan with that samurai monster a alien. Oh, yeah. I remember that episode. He has to learn, um, I don't know if humility is the right word, but he has to learn to deal that it's not the weapon, it's the man who uses it. And he still doesn't get that fruit until, like, what, the very end, even though he... Because he keeps hounding to use Shadow Saber. Yeah. Heh, <laughs> hound, hound Kruger for Shadow Saber. Because <laughs> he's uh, a dog. We did not mean to make that pun. Yeah. But in addition, uh, further down the line, Jack even lets us... Uh, I almost said uh, Sid. Sky. He lets Sky take up the Red Ranger form to bring in a criminal who killed his father. Now... That was so apropos. That was... Bravo, Jack. What a great character moment. Especially, I uh, got closure for Sky, who avenged his father's step in that one. And he eventually did become Red Ranger, and he showed his utmost respect to Jack by the end of it. That was so good. And, um, one of the other things, too... Um, Jack is very attentive once he learns about his rangers, because there's another episode where Skye is, um, taking a monster to a cell, and he has the bizarre ability to switch bodies with people. Oh, yeah. And so he switches bodies with Skye, and Jack notices this by the end of the episode, because he realizes that Rick, uh, their robotic crime dog... No matter what uh, he does when he's throwing the ball... He always brings it back to Sky because he wants because he likes playing a fetch with him. Yeah. And so he uses that to determine the monster's true identity and save his friend before he was gunned down by his own ranger team. I love that, dog. I love that episode, too. It's a great episode with a lot of great moments. In fact, Jack has a lot of great moments, even with Piggy. Ugh. That was some interesting dialogue between him and Biggie. Bottom line, watch the episode, watch the series, or the season, because Jack is a great Red Ranger with a lot of great development, a good heart, a lot of room for learning at the beginning, and even though he doesn't stay with SPD at the end of the series, he still has utmost respect for them, and possibly would take up another Ranger color if they ask him. Oh, easily, especially with the way it all ended. It was definitely... A nice little character closing arc for him, 
as a retired officer and still trying to do good in the community in a more legal fashion. Yeah. So, I Even with Z, um, actually finding a place in SPD for herself. Yeah. So, I guess Jack is the quintessential uh, good Samaritan Red Ranger that could be better than Carter, Casey, Shane, all the other guys that were on this list. And I mention the fact that he also listens to his teammates and learns from them as well, and, and keeps in consideration about their well-being. He learns from his mistakes. He makes so tactical he, decisions. So, he, he would say that he is the quintessential Red Leader Ranger. Yeah. Even though he came right from the bottom of the shit pile. Legit. Well done, SPD. He gave us one hell of a Red Ranger. And one hell of a season. Yeah. So, I think we're done here. That sounds about right. For the moment, anyway. We'll give you guys more lists because we just want to talk about this. And if you guys watch it, we're glad to watch it. Thank you for that. Your views mean everything to us. So, that said, done. Thanks for stopping by. And I am the Guardian. And I am the Professor. And we'll catch you guys... On the next rerun, uh, rerun reaction, and ah, there it is. The uh, whatever we're calling this, our top ten Power Ranger lists. Pretty much. Farewell.